Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. Few months ago, I introduced the GLI Net router, the Flint GLI X1800. And let's have a check at the device after few months. So recently I have tried to connect the router to the internet and I want to see what is the stability of the router. Can it up and running for a long time? Let's check it out. And right now I'm connected to the added edge connection and if I tie up time, I can see that the router is up and running for 23, actually it's almost 24 days. And if I run IF status and then one, I can see that the PVE one connection is also up and running for these seconds. So let's try to convert it to the days and let's see so as you can see it is around 23.9 so actually the router up time is the same with the PPE connection up time so with this result we can be confident on the stabilities of at least the one interface of the router so this is about the router up time but the main topic of this video is not about it but I want to try out the new beta firmware. It is the V4 firmware, all right? And of course, before we do any kind of update or upgrade, I want to perform a backup. So let's go and see if we can backup the configuration. All right, so let me see. We have nowhere to backup, is it true? Alright, so unfortunately, I cannot find a place to back up the current configuration. So right now, we are using version 3.2.13 and I think that when we want to upgrade to the new firmware, perhaps we lost all of our configuration. So I want to back up that, but unfortunately, we cannot do that. So let's just give a try with the new one. So let's go to local upgrade right here and upload this firmware to begin the upgrade all right ranks and rub it here so we can see that it is uploading and let's wait for it all right the uploaded firmware is older than the current firmware or by a third party all right that sure so we don't need to keep the setting and also don't need to keep the install package. So let's proceed with the installation. And right now, the router is been updated with the new firmware. Actually, before we proceed with the beta firmware installations or before the upgrading, we need to have a check on the DeepRix via U-Boot tutorial. And this is very important because maybe we break the router during the installation or the upgrade process and this tutorial will be very useful to recover the router so if you have time please go through the document before you proceed with the installations or the upgrade Alright, so I have just connected the router to my Ethernet port. Let me disconnect from Wi-Fi and let's see if I can find the router. So let's go to the adapter options and right here we have the router up and running. So let's refresh the page and let's check it. Alright, 192.168.8.1 and yes we have a new look so next new password okay all right submit and perfect so we have a new ui and you can see as guards ipv6 vpn and we have our network connection status and right here let's try to modify the one connection trend to ppoe and yep 
and unfortunately for the PB connection, we don't have the VLAN option. So this is something I want to see in the next firmware update from GLINet, but I'm not sure if they're going to do that. All right, so we have no internet connection and that's it. Okay, so right now the version is 4.0.0 and it beta A. Let's connect to the router via LSH and check it. Root and my password. All right, so we can see that the GLAX1800 is running OpenWRT 21.02. Let me see why the kernel version. So uname A. And we can see that it's running Linux kernel 4.4.6. Okay, that's good. So let's see what do we have for OPKG update. So running OPKG update, we can see that the router it uses OpenWRT 21.02 Snapshot Rebel. But we're unable to update because I have yet to configure PPoE. So let me just do that. Right here, I have internet. Let's modify, change to PPoE, apply. And for sure, there will be no internet connection because my PPoE connection is running on VLAN 35. So let me edit that. Let's press the I key to switch to the insert mode and 0. Point, okay, so 0. Point 35 and that's it. Right and quick and then service network restart. Okay, so I expect that the router should be up and running shortly. So we can see that the PPoE one connection is up and running. Let's try to ping 1.1.1 and yes, it is up and running. So basically, there are no new features, but just the upgrade in the kernel, upgrade in the OpenWRT. And right here, we have the VPN client and VPN server on one dashboard, which means we can run VPN, client, and server at the same time. It can be Wygod VPN or Open VPN. All right, that's good. Let's see what else do we have. Let's go to more settings and let's go to the advanced setting. Let's try to go to Lucy and yep, here we have Lucy. Okay, so everything looks nice. We have the model GL Technologies INZ AX1800. On the network interfaces, we have it. We have the device time as well. And we can see that it is using the DSA instead of the old switch. But look, we do have the switch menu right here. We can see the status, but we can see that the description is not accurate and there is a warning that switch 0 has an unknown topology. So it is not recommended to touch anything on this switch page. Let's see if I can install my own firmware. Let me see if I go to update the OPKG and try to install something, let's say net data. Will it work? Let's check it out. Alright, so the error message that failed to download this one, wget return error 8. Let me see if there are any package. Okay, so we do have this package right here. And what happened if I press the install button? And yes, I can install that data on the GLYX1800. That's not bad. Let's check it out. Perfect, that is really good. And as you can see right now, I have an inbound for the one interface. It actually 
the IPTV stream from my internet service provider. This is very normal. But we can see that with average load of 25 megabytes per second, the CPU uses is only 1.3%. So I see that there are lots of uh, update and a lot of complaints about the new firmware or a new better firmware right here. And some people saying that they got a better VPN throughput compared to the previous version. And some is saying that the performance is worse. But you can always download an upgrade using U-Boot or I believe you can download an upgrade using the web UI as well. So if you want to check out, I will put the link to the firmware and you can try with it. Don't close the video yet because we are going to do some tests. I'm trying to install SQM QoS but it will fail due to missing the KMOD schedule case package from the Rebel. And I tried the same with the GOI Net UI and I got the same error message. Maybe we need to build the firmware ourselves and add this to it. The CPU uses during speed test with PPUE is almost the same with the previous step we did. There are no differences in the CPU utilization. I can't find the shortware offloading section in Lucy's firewall. So I will try to enable it with CLI. We just need to edit the firewall configuration file and add the option flow offloading equal one to it. And after that, restart the firewall with service firewall restart. Unfortunately, offloading is not working on this router because extension flow offload is not available. Maybe we can see it in the next release. I have set up a local server to test the VPN throughput. The fling is connected to the LAN ports of the Linksys WRT 1900 AC running OpenWRT. On the LAN side of the WRT 1900 AC, there is an Ubuntu server connected. It is powered by the Xeon E3 1230V2 CPU with 60GB of RAM. With these specs, I believe it should be enough to run Wygod at 1 Gbps. I run a 1 to LAN throughput test with the Flink's one port in GSCP client mode. The CPU load is 35% for 907 Mbps. The load is shared between 4 cores of the CPU. I put 3 throughput at 948 Mbps. This is not bad at all. Now the OpenVPN config file has been uploaded to the router and the connection is enabled. Let's see what do we get. It is 174 Mbps with open speed test. Running the test again with iPub3, I get the speed at 164 Mbps. During the test, the CPU load is around 37% and only one core of the CPU is fully loaded. And this is absolutely normal. Let's move on with Wygod VPN. Testing with iPub3, I can see that the speed is not stable and the result is different from one to another. In the first test, it is 595 Mbps. During the second test, it dropped to 462 Mbps. And to be sure, I ran the test again with T40 and the speed I got is 491 Mbps. When checking out the speed with open speed test, I can see that the download speed is around 645 Mbps and the upload speed is around 480 Mbps. I have also tested that the Flink GLIX1800 can run Wygod client and why got several at the same time. From this video, you can see that it is working, but I will not talk in detail about this. So, so far we have checked out the beta firmware for the Flink GLI X1800. It may take some time for the stable release to become available. However, from this we know that GLINet is working on the device to get it updated so that will be the end of this video. 
Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.